I'm watching that guy, and I'm I'm not sure he's not the most valuable player in this league. And I thought that got the Warriors and Steph out of their game. To me, this is running much deeper than Magic should have called me before he made his big announcement. Chris Broussard here, and welcome to the brand new Hoops on Fox podcast. This podcast will give you your daily dose of all things NBA from Fox Sports, including the best content from Skip and Shannon, Nick Wright, plus special guests, fresh NBA content from myself, post-game interviews from NBA stars around the league, and much, much more. Up first, Chris Broussard joins Skip and Shannon to break down the Warriors' chances of finishing off the Rockets with Steph Curry struggling. How much is Steph to blame for the loss? (sighs) Well, look, he obviously played horribly. They were lost in overtime. So you figure if we get any type of decent performance out of Steph, we win. We all know, though, it obviously doesn't always work that way. And so while he played terribly, I don't put that much of the blame on him. And, and I know the, the last minute dunk Y'all he missed. Stick together, they won't you? <laughs> no, the last, no, the last no. brothers stick together. I got yeah. facts. I got that- facts. No, that's not what this is. <laughs> I have facts. Look, Clay was six for 16, 16 points. All right. The Rockets were out rebounded by 20. Gave up 17 offensive rebounds, offensive rebounds. And Steph, as bad as he was, and none of this is to take away from how badly he played. His pl- and I know, Skip, you're in the plus minus. His plus minus was negative one, which was better than KD's and Clay's. Hmm. So, again, he was bad, but he, was, he wasn't really good in the first two games. Right. He averaged 19 points a game, 26% shooting from three, below 40% shooting overall, and they still won. To me, watching that game, particularly in the second half, I was in- amazed at the way the Warriors were playing. Hmm. They were playing KD, bring it up, Brought it up every and time. four out. Like, like it was Le- like KD was LeBron. He was, you know. And Steph, as great a shooter as he is, I think he's the best ever. He's not a spot up shooter. He can catch and shoot, obviously. Right. But he's used to moving, moving. coming off the dribble. Right. And you relegate like Houston does that with the switching. That's happened last year mm-hmm. in the series. But KD, and that's not really KD's when he's at his best either. I think he's better in the Warriors system occasionally going ISO. That's LeBron's game. That's the difference between LeBron and KD. KD can pass pretty well, dribble well, but he's not LeBron in terms of running an offense. And I thought that got the Warriors and Steph out of their game. And they need to be careful not play that way. Look. When, when KD is there the last three years, when he goes for 40 or more points, they're six and seven. Steph missed six of those games. So when Steph plays, they're four and three when KD goes for 40 or more. Steph averages 21 points, 41% shooting in those games. So they need to, the Warriors need to be careful to stick to their offense and their game plan. And even though Houston's switching everything, continue to run their offense, be patient, and keep the players and ball moving. Mm. And I know KD's playing great. There's nothing against him. He's playing phenomenally. But it's so it's easy, it's tempting to just let him do his thing. Mm -hmm. But that's not the Warriors game. That's not when they're at their best. The thing is, even if I were to concede, but I believe he played a goofball game and a lot of this needs to be placed at his feet. It was that he played bad late. That's what we remember. We remember the missed layup. We remember the missed dunk. We remember the turnover that was, uh, that was as a result of an offensive foul. We missed, we, we remember the two missed jumpers. It was in the crunch when we could have forgotten about how well he had played up until that point because you remember Skippy hit that big three the other night, we said that was the right. first time we've seen Steph hit a meaningful shot in the playoff game. After could, he should have been fouled out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, right. Twice. So in that, in, in this situation, <laughs> had he m- maybe got the, uh, uh, made that layup, cut the game to a three-point <laughs> game, now we'll foul, and we'll see if you can make your free throws down the stretch. He gagged it off. He's not playing well. Steph Curry shooting 35% from the floor, 25% from the three, and he missed two of his three free throws Saturday night. He had an all-time goofball game. Has he played playoff games in which he shot the ball worse than what he shot Saturday? Absolutely. But I believe from a mental standpoint, Hmm. this was the worst game we've seen Steph Hmm. play. And for an all-time great player, you can't have those type of performances. Hmm. 
This is a new expression from you, a goofball game. I've never heard of that. Have you heard of that? that was, no, uh, 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 you're trying to create a new new little thing. <laughs> goofball huh? game. I agree with what you said, though. Okay, I don't. <laughs> oh. Steph Curry lost that game more than James Harden won that game. And the player who did the best job of stopping Kevin Durant in the end was Steph Curry. Mm. And can we just officially, once and for all, acknowledge that Kevin Durant is the best player on this planet? Can we please? Well, I, I, there's, well, I was going to well, say, well, why? there's somebody up in Toronto well, wait, that you don't want to acknowledge. Else. Wait, you mean the guy who in the fourth quarter of game three scored no baskets? The guy who yesterday missed four free throws? The in guy the who hit quarter? that big three over Embiid and Simmons. That's oh, the guy. Uh, late. I'm to talk about that, but we're not talking about that right now. Only. He tried to, to, to sell me virtuoso performance, and I just well, shot big holes all through it. 38-14 yeah. in this band. Yeah, but okay, well, go ahead. Let's go, go ahead. back to what happened. Okay. Because here's what happened to me. Kevin Durant was crazy nuclear on fire for the first half of the fourth quarter. He scored 12 points in the first 555 of the fourth quarter. That's extraordinary. This is the, this is basically the closeout game because they're going to go up three to nothing. So the best player on the planet is saying, "Give me the ball and get out of my way," because I never seen this before. He's dribbling the ball up the floor right, every right. possession. This yep. had never happened. The seven foot monster that you described is dribbling the ball up the floor and just saying, "I'm just going to go." They're going to send two at me, and I'm just going to pull up on two guys and just shoot it because they can't stop me. And if I really decide they have two or three on me, I'll just go LeBron and I'll pass it to an open shooter and they'll make the shot. And yep. Iguodala hit a big shot late in the fourth quarter. Sure. But here's the point. Kevin Durant dunked with 6.05 left in regulation. That was the last shot he took until 19 seconds remained. And to me, and I'm going second or third level subliminal psychological here, it felt to me like Steph was saying, you know what? This is really my team. I'm a two-time MVP. I know you're a two-time finals MVP, but I'm going to reassert myself here. And it, it took Steph stopping Kevin Durant because usually when somebody's hot in Golden State, you they feed just them. feed that right. guy. Right. And again, right. you did make a, a deep basketball X and O's point. Maybe they should have let Steph bring it up or Clay bring it up or Iggy bring it up and let Kevin run off picks to get more open because now he's just having to create by himself at seven feet right. tall on, on two guys. Like, right. I'll and just he started dribble. missing some okay. too, no, right? But, but he didn't take a shot from again, from 6.05 all the way down to 19 seconds left. He didn't take a shot in the fourth quarter. That's just wrong mm. to score that many that fast. And then, to your point, he did miss the shot. But by then, he'd cool completely off. And it looked like, do you guys really want me to try this? And he's got two guys on him, and he went to his right, and he's not that good going to his right, and tried to pull up, and it looked awkward, and he missed the jump shot. Uh, 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 are the best player on the planet allowed to cool off? Because I know a guy that was, for the last decade, was the best player, and if he did anything out of the ordinary, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Chris. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, and but go ahead. By the I way, know. this man dared in the opening block what of the I show. Do? To, to throw at me that LeBron James made the right play to pass to Kyle Korver as, as if this was the wrong play to pass to Andre Iguodala when he was wide open in the corner with, what, 45 seconds left. Did he? Did Iggy make the three? Yes, he did. Because you're, did so Korver you're saying it? KD made the right play, but LeBron made the wrong okay. one? Yes. yes. Yes, it was because you're throwing it to a guy whose clutch, he was a former finals MVP. But Korver's a much better, it's not even comparable who's the better three-point mm -hmm. shooter. You so, know that. So in the last two finals, I'm glad you brought that up. Andre Iguodala was eight for 21 from three in their last two finals. Is that good? And, and Kyle Korver was six for 27, including last year, one for 11 in the yeah. finals. One for 11. No, no. So you can give me all the regular season you want to, but with the money on the table, I'll take Andre Iguodala shooting a three every time over Kyle Korver. I every will. time. Huh. You can't. You can't put the whole series in Kyle Korver's hands in the corner of a game three in your house, right? That's that's your house. You you finish it. Go to the free throw line and yeah, make but it but two he, free throws. But he's a 60% corner three ball shooter. In the regular season. If this Iggy misses finals. that shot, Skip, are you saying KD made the right play? No, oh, but he, but he he did miss. But, uh, <laughs> but, but you can't I, base I've it on that. I got a bank on my side. You got a miss but on you your side. But, has, but you said he had it going. I got a Finals MVP on my side. You got Kyle Korver on but, your but, side. But, Next, Colin Coward dissects Kawhi Leonard's sensational playoff run. Do not confuse talent with valuable. Do not even confuse production with valuable. 
Now, in most instances, if you're talented, you're valuable. And if you're productive, you're valuable. But not all the time. A Lamborghini, if it was a person, would be very, very talented. But I couldn't even get my kids in the car grocery bags. You know, if it was a tight little Porsche Lamborghini. Don't confuse the two. Kawhi Leonard's talented and he's productive. Everybody's talking about him this morning being the second best player in the NBA to Kevin Durant. He's not that valuable. Toronto was 17 and 5 when he didn't play. He doesn't communicate. He doesn't pass. He doesn't elevate others. LeBron James leaves a franchise and they disintegrate the next day. Pat Riley, Eric Spolstra, Miami. Awful, great, awful. Twice in Cleveland. Finals, finals. Oh, we're awful. LeBron gets hurt with the Lakers. At the end of the year, they were the worst team in the league. They were losing to teams like Phoenix and New York that were tanking. LeBron's great, talented, productive, and bizarrely valuable. Kawhi is just really talented. And damn, he's productive. How valuable is he? Toronto made the playoffs last year. Toronto was the number one seed last year. Toronto last year in the regular season was 58 and 24. And then Kawhi came and they were 59 and 23 and 17 and 5 when he didn't play this year. He's just talented. He reminds me of the running back Adrian Peterson. They have these weird, weird, unique similarities. Both their hands are a topic. Kawhi's got abnormally large hands. Adrian Peterson has a legendarily almost violent handshake. They're both strong for their size. They're both awe-inspiring. And um, neither makes their team necessarily much better. Vikings got better when Adrian Peterson left. And by the way, San Antonio, they're in the playoffs again. It should be noted both have one flaw. Adrian Peterson could never catch. Kawhi Leonard doesn't pass. The guy in these playoffs that's actually talented, productive, and valuable is the guy for Denver, the Joker, Jokic. Folks, he's a center. They run their offense through him. Denver is the youngest playoff team in my life I think I've ever seen in the second round. He leads them in everything. He leads them in points, rebounds, assists. They give him the ball late, top of the key, down low. He has three times the assists of Kawhi Leonard and double almost the rebounds. They're both very good players in points and field goal percentage. Jokic elevates every Denver nugget. Denver should have no business being in the playoffs with this roster. It's a bunch of guys. Is Denver historically relevant? This is, this is a bunch of kids. They're just, they're going to be great if they can get one more player. Denver's going to be good for 10 years. They're all kids. Toronto's good always with Kawhi, without Kawhi. People are confusing this. I don't think Kawhi is a wildly valuable player because I think he's the NBA's silent assassin. He comes to your job. Nobody really knows him. He doesn't talk with anybody. He hits his targets. He leaves and frankly would rather work alone and does his best work alone. The assassin is simply that. Working by himself. In San Antonio, there used to be this criticism about him. They asked Greg Popovich once, what was the best advice you could give Kawhi Leonard? Do you remember what he said? Popovich said that when I call a play for Kawhi, I'm actually calling a play for the Spurs. (laughs) Kawhi doesn't communicate. Of course he's not a great passer. Because passing's communicating on the floor. It's playing well with others. He doesn't. He just arrives, hits his targets, works alone, leaves the building. Anybody really know Kawhi? No, he never talked. The silent assassin never talks either. It's against his job description. Better serve working alone. I'm not denying Kawhi is great. Toronto was great without him. They'll be fine with him. They didn't win a title without him, but they were good. They won't win a Nash- they won't win the championship without him, but they're good. And the kid in Denver is, he doesn't, he doesn't have an NBA body. We don't know much about him. He didn't play college basketball here. So, so we just, and Denver's not a, a historically relevant, it's a football city. You could argue it's a hockey city and a baseball city third. But that guy 
If you don't, if you take him out of Denver, Portland's winning these games, blowouts, four for four, and the series is over. He may take this bunch of kids to the Western Conference Finals. He's an incredible talent. And I'll say this about, about Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson may have been a, just a better, harder runner than Ezekiel Elliott of the Cowboys. But Zeke, when he leaves the Cowboys for a three-game stretch, they can't get first downs. The Vikings were better without Adrian Peterson because Zeke can catch. Zeke can run. Zeke can block. Adrian Peterson left the Vikings. They got better. Zeke takes two weeks off. The team can't function with the best offensive line in football. The Cowboys can't function without Zeke. Don't confuse talent and valuable. Ezekiel Elliott is both. Peterson was just talented. And that's what I think about Kawhi Leonard. The kid in Denver is an unbelievable talent. And he makes everybody on the Nuggets better. Let me shift to this. Philadelphia. Philadelphia fans are like all fans. When they're right, they rush to Twitter. When they're wrong, it's crickets. So Joel Embiid has wild swings. He's great. He's awful. He's amazing. He's hurt. He's healthy. He's not. And whenever he's great, Philadelphia meatballs run to their Twitter accounts. Told you, man, face of the franchise. Of course, they didn't run to the thing yesterday because he was awful. But here's my takeaway on Joel Embiid. If you're somebody at work, and we've all worked with somebody like this, that has a temper, that has outbursts, a little bit of a screamer and a yeller, that's his reputation because he's shown it before. Now, he can be funny like Alec Baldwin, but Alec Baldwin in an airport, even when he's smiling and handsome and funny and glib with TMZ, you know he's this close to popping. Same with Christian Bale. That's their reality, even in the times they're not yelling and strangling a TMZ reporter at the airport. Joe LMB's reality, good or bad game is... He didn't play for two years because he was hurt. And he needs six treatments a game because he's always hurt. And he's got a bad diet. And he's always hurt. Did I mention he's always hurt? And he missed 14 of the last 24 games. Did I mention he gets hurt a lot? He's a liability to the franchise. I don't care that he played terrible yesterday. Just like I don't care that he played great the previous game. Yesterday wasn't even his worst game in this series. He is a high-maintenance, noisy guy. I don't care what his games are. I don't rush to Twitter for validation when he's bad. I could have spent all day yesterday uh, on Embiid crushing him on Twitter. I didn't. I talked about Jokic and nobody cares. Embiid's reality, like the guy with a temper at work, is doesn't mean he always has a temper. Doesn't mean he's always yelling at cameramen. Doesn't mean he's always picking fights with his bosses. But we all know it's right below the surface. And so you walk on eggshells around him. It doesn't matter that Embiid was terrible yesterday or great the game before. If you build your franchise around him, this is what you get. He's calling his coach in the morning. I may not play. He's hurt. He's sick. They want him to lose weight. He needs a nutritionist. He's just too damn noisy for me. So you go ahead and build this Sixer team around Embiid and Butler. But I'll tell you, I'll take Simmons because Simmons may be quiet and he can't shoot. And right now he's flawed but he's quiet. I don't get a lot of noise and social media and talking and calling his coach at three in the morning. Don't rush to Twitter every time he drops 32 and looks great. And I'll promise you, I won't rush to Twitter when he's as awful as he was yesterday. And that wasn't even his worst game in this series. Embiid is a fragile, inconsistent, wildly popular big man Even during his great stretches, six treatments per day to get on the floor, IV at six in the morning, 63% of games in Philly he's missed, an incredibly likable social star. But folks, bad back, bad diet, not always a great teammate. You can keep rushing to Twitter to confirm it. You want to build around that guy? You got choices in Philadelphia. I'm going to take the quiet guy. I'm going to take the guy who's one of the greatest passing young players, Ben Simmons, I've ever seen. He's not refined. He's not a polished product. He's not as good as Embiid now. But I don't get all the inconsistency. I don't get, and by the way, Embiid and Simmons can't play together. So you're going to have to choose one at some point. But it's just this constant up, down, noise, back, diet, hurt. It's too much. Just because 
The, by the way, here was the headline before this series, before the Sixers Raptors series. Here's the guy that everybody loves. Here's the guy that missed 63% of games. Here's the guy that didn't play for his first two years. Here was the headline. Embiid wants to play more, but knee tendonitis will last all playoffs. <laughs> that's, that's, what she, that's what it's going to be for the next eight years. So whether the guy, whether Aldwick, Alec Baldwin attacks the TMZ guy at the airport, we all know it's in him because he's done it a bunch. Just because he's not doing it now doesn't mean Alec wouldn't do it. It's who he is. He's got a temper. He pops. I mean, we know who Embiid is. Why are we arguing about it? Now, former NBA point guard Nate Robinson sits with Colin Coward to discuss the 2019 NBA playoffs and his chances at playing football. I have a unique fascination with Nate Robinson, not because he played in the NBA for 11 years or is the only person to win a three slam dunk contest or that at 5'9", uh, he won those slam dunk contests. No, I grew up as a Washington Husky fan. Come on out, Nate Robinson. And Nate Robinson started as a freshman at cornerback for the football team from Mount Rainier High. His dad is who I grew up idolizing, Jacques Robinson, a great running back for Washington. You started in football. I didn't care about Husky basketball. The only team I've ever passionately loved was Husky football, and you <laughs> were on your way as an All-American freshman corner to being Dion that liked to tackle, and then you bailed on football and broke my heart. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, I'm sorry <laughs> I, did. I, I broke your heart. Thank you. You can blame that. Um, my school who fired Coach Rick Neuheisel. That's and then you went to hoops. Yes, that's the that's the real reason why I stopped playing because they fired my coach and I went to Rainier Beach High School. Oh my bad, the best high school in the country. So yeah, yes. Shout out to By the Beach. way, it's a great high school. It's got great sports. Uh, your mom, dad, uh, Jock Robinson. So it's interesting. People may not realize I grew up with Nate Robinson, the football player, and you were badass. Thank you. You were a great. You were going to be a. You were a freshman All American, played in the Sun Bowl, and then you left football, and we were all like. Uh, nobody cares about Husky <laughs> basketball. I had the Nate Robbins. He was our best yeah, player. I had to put freshman. Husky basketball on the map. Yeah. So let's, I want to talk about, you disagree with me on Kawhi. And I said before, don't confuse. Steve Nash won the MVP and everybody said, come on, Steve Nash. And I always said, it's not that he gives you 22. It's that, you know how many guys he got paid in this league? He got a, <laughs> he got Joe Johnson a contract. He, he was got, spoon feeding everybody. Yeah. Every, I mean, he just paid everybody. Kawhi is great but he doesn't pass. They were 17-5 and five this year, Nate, without him. San Antonio's a playoff team. Aren't there guys you've played with who are great, but are they making you better? I mean, honestly, Michael Jordan didn't pass the ball that much. He passed it to the rim more than he did to his teammates, <laughs> and he's the greatest player in the world. But I, I, one person, I love Kawhi. Why? His game is just, I mean, he's evolved. He's not just a defensive guy. That's, and that's how he started in the league as being a defensive guy. Now he's showing that he's added his offense, and he's he looks unstoppable. What a guy is around the league. He he doesn't talk much. He's quiet. Like, how does that land with players? Uh, I mean, he shows up to work every day. That should, that's the only thing that matters. That's the only thing that should matter. He comes to work every day. He brings his A game. He comes in, and he 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 shows that he can. He's, he's a winner. He, uh, he's a champion. MVP, finals MVP. I mean, come on, man. He reminds me a little bit of a guy. Do you remember Alex English? Yeah. Denver Nuggets? Yep. Get bu a, a bucket. A he walking was, bucket. Get a bucket. Yeah. He played for Denver. Didn't. Now, I think he's in the NBA, a front office. He's a smart dude. Quiet, reserved. He had that. He His game looked like Kawhi. Alex English appeared to never sweat. Alex English showed up, gave you 27. I don't and, think and, he and chill And chill and just watch the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he just came in, gave you 27 left, didn't talk, no flash. Kawhi's got that component. Um, you know, I, when you, I want to talk about the Sixers. So they're unbelievably talented. But they got four guys, and I think all four guys, Nate, want a max. But Embiid's hell scares me. Ben can't shoot. Tobias isn't a max guy. And I love Jimmy Butler, the athlete. But a lot of people say he can be tough on young players. If I told you, you got to keep two, and I want everything considered, I struggle keeping Embiid because big guys get hurt early. It scares me. Uh, well, one, I'm going to keep Ben Simmons. He's young, um, and he's a point guard. And if, if I'm the Sixers, I don't need Ben Simmons to shoot no jumpers. I would tell him, just don't shoot. If you don't want to practice your jump shot and get it right, then don't shoot at all. Just go to the basket, pass. He's like a... 
He's like, he's kind of like a Magic Johnson. Magic didn't shoot early. Exactly. He, he had to learn how to do it. And I'm not saying Magic Johnson had the best jump shot in the world. We all know that. You know, he didn't have a, <laughs> the best jump shot. But he got everybody involved, which that's what Ben Simmons does. And he does a great job at yeah, it. Yeah, I like. Now, again, Ben's interesting because, you know, Embiid's this big popular personality. But Simmons is a unique player. I don't think Simmons and Embiid work because when Embiid's in the lane – and Embiid, you don't want Embiid going outside because then he thinks he's a shooter. And he's gotten better, but he's not a shooter. So Embiid's in the lane. Well, Embiid's in the lane, so is the guy guarding him. Therefore, Ben only scores at the rim. So Ben just stands around in the half-court game. They're oil and water. They don't work together. Uh, I mean, they just they, they just they they still have to learn how to work together. They, they still have time. Uh, they, they're showing that right now by being uh, taking uh, the Raptors – and I think it's going to go seven games. I mean, they. I think they play well together. It's just that Embiid has to do a better job of, uh, of one, preparing himself for games, uh, eating better, yeah, taking what do you care make of his of body. Well, everybody in the league's talking about that. What I mean, you- it's just something I, – like, I know I've been, I've been a part of the league. I've ate horrible food before I've played, and I just didn't feel like I'm supposed to. So you just have to – he has to change his diet. Did, um, you did. Yeah, facts. You did. Yeah. You were a you were a Taco Bell driving to the arena guy. Nah, no, no fast food, but I would eat like it, it could be lasagna, chicken nuggets, whatever. <laughs> it just didn't matter. I just wanted to eat sometime before the game and I would just eat whatever. So I had to change the way I ate over the, over time because I can feel it, it it takes a toll on your body over right. time. Yes. Uh Nate Robinson joining us, eleven years in the NBA. Uh, explain this to me. So Kevin Durant is I think he wants to be known in the GOAT conversation, and I think he's great. I mean, he is a GOAT. He's great. Yeah. Um, he's on the best team maybe ever. He'll take less money to go to New York. He'll go from a, a really well-run, smart-owned team to the Knicks are kind of a mess. And the understanding is, hey, he wants to be the man. And my takeaway is, man, be very careful about leaving money on the table and a great boss for a bad boss. Would you leave if you would potentially have your third MVP in the finals. I don't really get it. The only, the only way I leave for me, if I'm Kevin Durant, if I'm, if I'm playing for the Sonics. So if the Sonics wanted me to come back to, Seattle, to, to play in Seattle, that's the only, that's the only the place hometown. I'm going to. <laughs> My hometown. That's the only place I'm going. But don't you think the quality of ownership matters? Take me to the, your career. You played for Celtics, Bulls, Knicks. What was the best Time of your career, the happiest you were winning. What was the best two, three year stretch? Uh, for me, uh, when I was in Chicago, I couldn't even lie. When I was in Chicago, I, I, I honestly had an opportunity to showcase that I can play basketball and I wasn't just a dunker. Um, uh, just that whole stint of me playing uh, under Tom Thibodeau, playing with Carlos Boozer, Rip Hamilton, Jimmy Butler, Luau Dang, Joe Kim Noah, Taj Gibson, like all my guys, it was just, it was magical. Every time I put on that jersey, I just felt like I was unstoppable. Like I was kind of like Michael Jordan, you know, in the sense of having that energy. So uh, that was my, I think that was my, you know, my, my best year of playing because I actually got a chance to play. Of all the NBA teams, the only one that shocks me is Denver because historically you can't win with kids in this league. Not in the playoffs. Right. The, the playoffs are for grown-ups, 28-year-old dudes, <laughs> men, and that's the way the league's worked since I was a kid. Denver's a bunch of kids. And the Joker, Jokic. And he didn't play college here. And he's got a bad body. And I'm watching that guy. And I'm I'm not sure he's not the most valuable player in this league. What is Denver without him? It's a bunch of kids. He's but, the best passing big man, Nate, I've seen since Arvidas Sabonis. Yeah, Denver, Denver Nuggets is a they're they're a great, they're an adult AAU team. Like we, <laughs> we like we team, me and my boys, we tease, you know, in our little group chat. But they're like a real AU team. They just go out and they hoop. They get it done, and it's, and they're fun to watch. Like all of them, Gary Harris, just all the you know all of them guys. I'm just I'm just mad that they're not playing Isaiah Thomas. Like you got you got a guy that can average thirty on your on well, your yeah, bench. Yeah, but you can't build around Isaiah. It's not about building around him. You gotta like you want to win. I want it. You want to win? Put it in. Let him go and get you twenty. Portland has nothing. They have they have they have no answer for Isaiah Thomas coming off the bench giving you twenty. They don't points. have an answer for Joker. He you don't. Know, I mean, he's 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 a walking triple double. He's like the he's like the big man Westbrook. He's gonna be averaging a triple double <laughs> one of these seasons. You guys heard it here. He's gonna average triple double next year. Well, he, he got nine and a half assists on a young basketball team. So you would think as his team grows, 
Th- some of those get better. M- missed jumpers become assists because he's going to give you 23, 12 and a half rebounds. That's just what he's going to give you. I-, I think he's the best player in the league because Denver's in that Rocky Mountain time zone. You're, they're not left coast. They're not right coast. They're not Midwest. Denver's just kind of a football city stuck in the mountains. The guy is, we don't watch a lot of Denver Nuggets. We don't talk about him. I think he's an incredible player. I love his game. I love his game. I love watching him play. I, I used to, uh, when uh, Wilson Chandler was on the team, I remember one time I FaceTimed Wilson Chandler, and I'm like, bro, where's the Joker at, bro? I, like, show me. Bro, I told him, you're filthy. Keep balling. Yeah. Like, like you have it. So whatever that is, you know, stick to it. So I'm watching the shop this weekend, and LeBron James is talking about Magic quit the team and didn't give LeBron a heads up. And, and you could tell Le- LeBron wasn't real happy with it. But like, was he supposed to? Well, I think he, I would call my best player and tell him, if I felt I lured you, you were a very <laughs> – if you lived in Seattle. So you felt like – yeah, okay, go ahead. And I, and I lure you to L.A. You're in your hometown, Akron for LeBron, Seattle right. for you. I lure you here with promises. And I'm going to resign. I think I'd give you a call. Nate, breaks my heart. I, I, can't, I can't run this team. Imagine just quit. LeBron's sitting there in the shop like, could you could – you? I mean, it happens, man. You know, everybody has their own personal things that they go through and – you know, you just... You, you wouldn't be mad? Nah, not really. Not, it's a business. You got to understand, you know, what you're getting into off, off the rip. You know, you just like... like I think that Alonzo Ball, his his reaction was, was hilarious because he's like, oh, we're, that, okay, what are we doing tonight? It happens. You got to move forward. Now it's time for LeBron. You got to go get ready for your your uh, this next season coming up, figure out what, what pieces you're going to add and come in and be ready to ball. Do you think it turns off free agents, though, that look at, at the Lakers as a mess? You played for a dysfunctional franchise for five years in New York. You guys didn't land the top free agents, not because of Nate Robinson. People didn't trust James Dolan. Yeah, that was that, that was a big one for us and not being able to get, you know, a certain guy. But I think that we had enough. We just, you know, we just needed a... a a solid coach to really guide us to help us, uh, you know, win games and get to the postseason. And we didn't, uh, we didn't have that. You think free agents look at the Lakers now and want to play there? Who who doesn't want to play in LA? I mean, I, if Paul you love George. basketball, you want to hoop like that. You like you gotta Paul George. Paul George, but he's good where he's at right now. There's no reason, like, there's no reason to leave OKC okay, when you have. You well, have why, why would I leave if I was Kawhi? Why would I leave? Toronto's uh, a wonderful see. town. It, a little cold. I like Toronto, but I mean, <laughs> who knows? He might not leave. He might stay. We don't know. We do you wait think they? Do you think they land any of these top guys? I hope so. But do you really believe it? I hope so. I mean, I mean, I'm available. I mean, I can still play and run up and down the court. So I mean, you know, but the, I mean, I'm not a superstar like the rest of these guys. But, but I that, definitely LeBron can play. wants a star. You can't win in this league with, without a second star. Yeah, he just has to figure out what star he wants to go get. And I think him and Kawhi would be nasty. That'd be that'd be tough, and I, I don't think people want to see that. Like they ain't ready for that. Following Chris Broussard and Jason McIntyre knock down the NBA's biggest question: Should KD leave the Warriors? Back here again, another special NBA playoff edition in the zone. Knock down Jay Chris Broussard in the building, dressed up for the occasion. Thank you, Chris. Uh, glad to be here. Got to get the barb started early. All right, let's get started, Chris. First topic: the best player in the NBA right now. Kevin Durant. All right, he didn't stop me. He's on board. Kevin Durant. He might be. We'll see. He's playing great. He might be. Chris Boussard, I will start it with this. Should Kevin Durant stay in Golden State, assuming they win the title, or should he go? Should he leave for allegedly greener pastures in New York with the Knicks or perhaps Brooklyn or the L.A. Clippers? Should he stay or should he go? I've said in the past that I think KD should stay one more year. You're going into the new arena. You go for four straight rings, which Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Shaq, Kobe, none of these guys you're compared to has done that since Bill Russell. He's the only one to ever do it. And that could, you know, separate you from a LeBron James and some of these other guys you're compared to. Not necessarily make you better, but certainly give you something you've done that they never did. Three in a row would give him that over LeBron. But, uh, As I watch this team play over time, I've changed my mind. I think they are too mentally taxed to win four in a row. I think they're mentally taxed now. I think their their eye is on the destination and not the journey. It's just like, man, 
Let's win this thing. You know, we think KD's out of here. You know, let's just go ahead and win this thing and, and you know, start all over again next year. So I, I just think that to bring them back, there's a reason team, no team since Bill Russell have won four straight. Have, have, no team has even gone to four straight other than, or five straight like these Warriors since Bill Russell. And because it becomes so taxing, even Michael Jordan, as mentally tough as he was, he stopped after each three-peat. Kobe and Shaq added Carl Malone and, well, they didn't win it, but they, they, they didn't win after their three in a row. They got tired. It's, it's tough. So I, I think they would still be the most talented team in the league, but I think they'd be mentally taxed and wouldn't win four straight. So I, don't, I, would, I wouldn't even pick them. If they win it this year, Kevin Durant returns, I would not pick them to win it next year. Wow. I'm not saying they weren't, wouldn't be capable of doing it, but I just think it would be so mentally draining that they wouldn't do it. Secondly, and I'll be quick on this point, even though KD would have won four straight, guess who else would have won four straight? Steph. And it still would probably be viewed as Steph Curry's team. Mm. Steph might be the finals MVP of the last two for all we know if they won four straight. So it's not just like he built this team and they won four straight. He still went to a team that was ready-made and we went for it. I have more to say, but I'll, I'll let you give yeah, your point. Yeah, I, I can't get on board with any of that, Chris. Uh, I get. I mean, the taxing part, you're right. In the regular season, they look taxed. The they don't look taxed in the postseason, well, losing the two to the Clippers? Series, you needed to, that wake-up call. I think they got it, right? They blew the fourth quarter lead and then blew, uh, I guess, game five. They should have won that. Since that, I mean, they were lights out in games one and two against the Rockets. I didn't see a mentally taxed team. I saw a team that had their eyes on the prize, and they closed both fourth quarters. Uh, they didn't appear mentally taxed in that, but I get what you're saying. It's tough to win. They, well, they're up. ready now. Now it's playoff yeah. time. It's, it's like, it's and you, you're you facing a legit threat, not the Clippers, yeah. so they're all zoned in. Yeah. And they would be zoned in next year in the finals. Yeah. But I'm just saying that I just think it, journey, yeah. it'd be but such – yeah. you already saw Russell. problems this year. To go back to the Bill Russell days, I, what were there, 15 teams in the league then? Something like, The travel was nothing that it is now, the postseason. I was looking at the numbers. These Warriors, last, what, four years in the finals, have played basically a full another season. So you're right. The taxing is there. Physically the and mentally. The is absurd. And for Kevin Durant to leave going from – here you go, Clay. Steph, here's a lob to Draymond to go into New York. Frank Nilakina, good luck with that jumper. Kevin Knox, can you not travel? Well, I, I would never, Lance I would never recommend lob. going to New York by yourself. Okay. But okay. if you go with Kyrie Irving, now you have a chance but to really do something. Into, does Kyrie want to play? Well, no, him? there has to. Well, there, 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 look, I, I, I would never tell Kevin Durant go to New York by himself. Even if they were like had a really good supporting cast, I just think he's not built for it by himself, okay? But I'm assuming if you go with Kyrie Irving or if you go to the Clippers or if you go to Brooklyn with someone else, my point is this. Kevin Durant is beginning, people are now talking about, uh, can he catch LeBron? Yes. Uh, can he even be in the discussion with a Jordan? The only way you That's get in there, I was on the herd today, and he said, is Durant top 10? Every single player that we would put in the top 10, even if it differs with a few players, whether you don't have a Keem, somebody else has a Keem, somebody has Duncan, somebody has Kobe, Oscar, whatever. Every, take out Oscar Robertson. Every other player has led their own team to the championship. Okay, time out. And gotta, Kevin Durant, that is an asterisk. We had Ennis Cantor, Ennis Cantor on my radio show to I couple yesterday. I asked him, he was a former teammate of KD's. I said, look, we know KD is great, arguably the best player in the world, top 10 all time, all that. Do to players. We've heard the media. I don't care what players. No, let me finish. I don't care what he let me finish. We've heard media say it. We've heard former superstars like Walt Frazier say there's a mental asterisk there. I said players. Do players feel that way? He said, I've talked with players. Most players do feel like he has to go do his own thing. There will always be, he will never be LeBron James or certainly not Michael Jordan 
If your legacy is you went to join a 73-win team that won a championship without you and won titles. Okay, he you were great. a team that did not win the They finals. won 73 games. Who cares about the regular They were season? in the finals. The Bucks won 60 games this year. whoop de damn do Oh, you comparing this Bucks team no, to that not. Warriors team? The Warriors lost. They needed Kevin Durant. There's a reason they got on a plane. There's Kevin, not a – look. Say, Kevin, we need Kevin you, is great. We I, need you. They, hold on. They went to recruit Dwight Howard a couple years earlier when they were still a they good team. They needed He's, Kevin Durant. They didn't need him. They He's a great him. player. He's been they the didn't need him. twice. So if was he, Andre Iguodala. So was James Worthy. Does that mean he was better than Magic? Is that fine? So is Cedric was, Maxwell. Does that mean he was Worthy. better than Bird? In that series? Fine. It's a team game. And who it doesn't the mean this your team. Whose team are the Warriors? Whose team are the Warriors? I don't know the answer to that question. Please. The best player Please. we know the Whose answer. Whose team are the Who's Warriors? Who's the best player on the Warriors? Kevin Durant. The Nobody denies years. that. They needed him. They did not need him. They didn't win against LeBron and Kyrie. Largely because Draymond got suspended. They didn't win. Let's keep they it. Needed. I agree. They did not need this idea As that, great oh, as Kevin Durant is, and, and look, I'm not denying he's arguably the best player in the world. He's arguably, arguably top 10 arguably. all time. Arguably top 10 all time. They did not need him. That's, and, that's and, factually and whether, incorrect. okay, you they disagree. They lost the finals to Kyrie and LeBron. Okay. That's a fact. You know what? All right. They flew out there to recruit Kevin Durant. Another fact. Who Kevin wouldn't? Kevin Durant comes there. Another fact. They win two titles. Facts. And he was the MVP twice. Look, Big old facts, Boussard. Look, they did not need him. You know it. I know it. That's the perception. Perception is often reality. From who? Players, media, fans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Players, media. Yeah. Don't Hold on. on Twitter? Players? I don't care about these oh, really? Well, history play will not give two. That's who determines players. history. Players, media, fans. You're That's who determines history. The prism of right now, ten years from now, nobody's gonna say. Uh, oh, he joined I, the I, I, Yeah, they 19. will. They're gonna say. Damn, that I just told you something that happened everybody. 30 years ago. What? That Larry Bird had two eight-point games in the finals. That Cornbread Nobody Maxwell was the MVP. I just mentioned it. Nobody says Larry Bird had eight game, eight points in the finals. They I just heard Bird someone mention it on TV the other day. I'm telling you right now, Kevin Durant wins three finals in a row. Three finals MVPs. Okay. He passes Kobe Bryant on the all-time greatness list. Stop. That's it. a fact. No, 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 One no, no, nothing. no. J -Mac. We ain't next topic. <laughs> we are not next topic. What? There is no way, if Kevin Durant wants to be in the conversation with Michael Jordan, if he wants to pass LeBron James, he has got to go he's, somewhere. No, listen. I looked let, it up. He's only 31. Finish. He's 31, let me finish. Chris. He's got to go somewhere else and lead a team to a championship. Don't you dare. As great as, See, stop it. As I great as Kevin Durant is, don't you dare put his name in the same sentence with Michael I'm, Jordan. I have not uttered that man's name. With in Michael this. Jordan, unless he leads Listen. his own yeah. team. Okay, time out, everybody. You can Chris Broussard LeBron is now that. setting it. So, let me know the teams that Kevin Durant can go to and win a championship. Sacramento, go there, KD, win a title, and then we'll respect you. Now, this that's is what, what you, it sounds this is like. what you resort to. But that's I mean, what really, it sounds like. Stay in the ballpark. What should he do? Go to the Wizards? Take John Wall to a title. Have, like, have I ever that mentioned logic? the Kings Fine. or the Wizards? There's a small Where list should he of go? teams. Fine, let's he, hear it. And Kyrie Irving should go to the Knicks. I don't think Kyrie wants to play with him. Well, I don't it, think KD wants Kyrie to play with him. If Kyrie doesn't go there, then either go to the Clippers or stay with Golden State. See, and now we're telling someone what to do with well, their look, career look, and look, livelihood. Look, stop. Hold on, hold on. Dude, because look, you are going to go on let's TV not and have, have, let's not not have, right, Chris. Let's not have knockdown Jay if we're going to bring life issues in. But no. We're not. Of course. Kevin Durant can do whatever the heck he wants, and we and I would bless him. So okay, let Give me, ask, me my blessing. Are you gonna respect no, let him me if he finish. stays in Golden let, State? Stop. Let me. I can't talk if you're gonna be interrupting every thought. Let's not bring a guy's family decisions, a guy's personal feelings into it, because of course Kevin Durant can go wherever he wants. Of course, and I'm not gonna fault him for doing what he wants to do. What's gonna make him happy personally? We are talking about basketball wise. Don't bring anything else into it. If Kyrie Irving wants to leave Brooklyn and go to freaking Orlando, if that's what makes him happy, fine. I will judge it from a basketball okay. standpoint. So don't bring in what Kevin Durant wants to do to make him happy. But, of course, okay. do what makes him from happy. A basketball from a basketball standpoint. From a basketball standpoint. Legacy standpoint. There are people playing in the league Who now. Listen, people that didn't play in the league are playing in the league now 
former stars that will never give him his full credit. I think he's phenomenal, but they will not give him his full 100% credit he deserves until he leads his own Are you team. one of those people? There will always be, I, I'll give him credit, but he can't, like I just said, he can't be in the conversation with Michael Jordan unless he goes he's somewhere 31. else and leads his Let's own not team. Go. He's only 31 years old. We didn't start the LeBron Jordan stuff until he was 32, 33. The LeBron Jordan stuff started in freaking Cleveland. I didn't start that. I, you that's weren't, other you people. weren't on TV at I, that I, time. I, I, that's other people on TV pushing nonsense when he's in Cleveland at 25 the years people old. people started that's idiotic. Bringing, no, no. People, he was all, nobody said he had reached him because he hadn't won championship. But people started talking about LeBron James as a potential heir or challenger to Michael Jordan when he was first in Cleveland. Okay. To me, that's fact. silly and dense. Nobody uh, said he had reached him, when but they I were look- saying that's the potential. Nobody's ever even thought Kevin Durant had the potential to be a Michael Jordan. From my perspective, and I'll, we'll move on after this, Kevin Durant, if he st- does this and tries this idea to go to a Knicks, a Clippers, and he fails, it is worse to go and fail than to stay and succeed in Golden State. My opinion is you stay, you win what four. What if you fail in Golden State? You're not going to. That I team mean, is too good. I, I mean, maybe an injury they might happens. They not win the fourth straight. Who's beating I, them? I don't think. I mean, we don't know if the Rockets are going to stay Milwaukee's together. Milwaukee's going to be better. Oh, Boston, geez. if Kyrie stays, will be right there. A lot of ifs. Yeah, of there's course no there's a lot of ifs. There's no ifs for staying in no, Golden State. No, there are ifs. There's ifs. Can, nobody's ever won four straight. That's why you do it. I think it'd be great. I just don't think they'd do it. All I don't right. think they went for it. So we figured out we'd get heated right out of the gate. Finally, Chris Broussard is back with Skip and Shane to explain what magic leaving the Lakers meant to LeBron. All right, Chris Broussard still with us. Uh, Chris, are you surprised by LeBron's reaction? I'm not surprised at all because I think it's the normal, natural human reaction. Yeah. You know, that anybody would have. And I agree with LeBron's sentiments. Look, magic did it wrong. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The two people he definitely should have told were Jeannie Buss and LeBron. And if he had some beef with Jeannie, some falling out temporarily that led to this, then okay, I get it, you don't tell her. You should have told LeBron, though. Absolutely. And now he and Rob Polinka, from what I'm told, are talking regularly, so it... If he didn't have a falling out with Magic. No, No, Magic. Oh, Magic. Yeah, Yeah, like, so I don't... If he he should have told all of them, but certainly LeBron, because I don't know if I characterize it as a friendship, but LeBron James and Magic have had a special relationship based on their superstardom, based on all the comparisons over the years. When LeBron lost his first finals in well in Miami against Dallas, mm-hmm. he texted Magic that summer like, "Man, I'm trying to get over the hump. Mm-hmm. Let's talk." You know, so even though they didn't really you know know each other and obviously weren't working together that much at that point. Um, And then just their interest off the floor, the business interest and things like that. So they've had this special relationship. That's why Magic got the meeting by himself, Mm -hmm. you know, because on July 1st, because of that relationship. So LeBron is totally right to feel the way he does. Uh, And, you know, like I said, I think Magic just totally did it the wrong way. And I think this is different. I've heard some people say, this, well, LeBron, when he left Cleveland, he didn't tell anybody. When he left Miami to go back to Cleveland, he didn't tell anybody. The difference is that LeBron was a free agent. We knew a move was coming. And even, even players like Dwayne Wade or in Cleveland or Mo Williams, they understand free agency to give a guy his space, let him make a decision. It might be based on family, money, whatever. Mm-hmm. This came out of the blue. Yeah, obviously <laughs> no one <laughs> knew this was coming. So, yeah, I, I think LeBron uh, was totally justified in his feelings. I also will give him some credit because, as you guys know, and Skip, you've even said you, you kind of feel sorry for LeBron at I this do. point. It would be e- like the think about three months ago, all the criticism was on LeBron for the Lakers falling apart, not making the playoffs, the toxic environment and all that. Now, since what's happened since then, it's like LeBron. Nobody's looking at LeBron right now. They're looking at Magic, Genie, the front, the oh. Rambus, you know, family, all that. It would have been easy for LeBron in that in that shop show to just play the Vic. Like, man, I ain't signed up for this. Mm-hmm. You know, I know how important it is to have a great front office, and you know, Pat Riley in Miami, and that's why we want to, like. He didn't t- play that excuse card. So I give him some credit for that because it's right there for the taking yeah. if he wanted mm. it. Go ahead. 
To me, this is running much deeper than Magic should have called me before he made his big announcement. To me, LeBron is concluding that Magic had completely turned on him because the money line here, the flashpoint of all these quotes is that LeBron is saying Magic didn't even call him to say, hey, Bron, kiss my ass, I'm out of here, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so he's saying that he turned on him, that for whatever reason, he just cut ties with him because he was disappointed somehow in LeBron's overall performance last year. The way he, you know, his bad body language, the, he didn't handle the kids correctly, that he tried to strong arm the organization, pull off the Anthony Davis trade. For, for all those reasons, he didn't close a lot of the early games. He disappointed Magic to the point that Magic just said, I'm not calling him before I make the announcement, and I'm not calling him the day after or two days after because he could have let the smoke clear and then clear the air with LeBron 24, 48 hours later. Did he call him? No, because LeBron wouldn't have uttered these quotes if they had cleared the right, air. By right, by then. That was filmed April 11th, they said. Yeah, right. which is that was, what it was? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you think that would have made a difference? Like, if it would have made a difference in that talk, maybe. But if Magic had done what he did and then called LeBron the next day or two, I still don't know if you it would have made a difference. just to clear the that air to say, hey, I, I'm not blaming you for any of this because, uh, again, LeBron is leaping to the conclusion he is getting blamed well, by Magic. I'm mad at Magic. I'm like, who in the hell shows up to work to quit? You could have <laughs> did that at home. Why you show up there? You knew... You he knew walking into the arena he was going to quit. He knew before okay, he, he got dressed so that. he was going to quit. So, so why the hell you show up? You could okay. just... But, but he told TMZ a couple of days later when he was in Beverly Hills, yeah. he said, I still talk to Gene right. every day. But you what? think he that talks to weird. LeBron every day? Nope. Well, I don't know that they've talked. I don't know for well, a they fact. they can't have talked. But, yeah, it's, I mean, again, that was filmed a few weeks that ago, was the thing, but LeBron, I don't know that they've talked. And LeBron's like, hold on, wait a minute. Now, you're going to come to my driveway, sit in my driveway for an hour or two before free agency starts. Then you spend three hours in my dry, in my home, and we're talking about how we're going to get the Lakers back to the Showtime Lakers, and we're going to be joined at the hip, and we're going to do this thing together. And you're going to bounce, and you can't even give me the common courtesy and say, well, you know, Brian, check this out. For uh, due to some circumstances beyond my control, I'm going to step away. You can't give me that, but you're going to come up in my house. Don't worry about it. Now, I got hey, something for you. Th this bridge is burned to the ground. Well, I, I think Le, from talking to people close to LeBron, I do think they've done their best to move on. Because we know LeBron came here for many other reasons. Sure. And Magic, let's look, LeBron is a very smart guy. Mm -hmm. He knows Magic wasn't pounding the pavement, you know, working every, the phone, doing Magic everything. Skip, why you take a job <laughs> when you know what comes along with the job? Look, I can't. Because you're Magic John. Right. That, you're the ambassador. You're the figurehead for the franchise. You still got to. Skip. You recruit. But you don't think he. Knew, again, I'm not saying. LeBron was. I'm sure he. I'm sure he was pissed off initially. Yeah. And I, I, I just don't know if he's that mad at this one. I think what he should be more angry about is what they've done since then. Huh. Because it gave them an opportunity when Magic stepped down to go ahead and really change that front office. Right. Hmm. Yeah, and and that, now you're yeah. not doing that. How, how can I be mad, man? Hey, if I sign up, I go to a fast food restaurant and they say I'm on fries. I'm a fry cook. I'm going to be mad. I got it. Man, I got it. That's all I do is cook fries all day long. What the hell Magic folks they come with that job? That's not, a, that's not a figurehead job. No, I, I, I agree. He, he recruits. He feels magic. What did he say? I, I recruited LeBron James. Like, I'm good. But hold on. Good. I did what I was supposed to do. And that's why you, Magic is capitalizing on, I brought LeBron yeah. here. He wants that to be the legacy sure. of his, his presidency. Legacy. Yeah. But you. No, if, no, not all those really questionable moves. <laughs> right. Made, right? Yeah. Exactly. Because you brought LeBron, though, you owed him that. Look, I think LeBron wanted to come to the Lakers anyway. Yes. But I do think Magic, he probably would have came anyway. Yeah. I'm almost certain. I am too. But Magic gave the Lakers front office at least some more of a semblance of credibility mm -hmm. yes. than it had had over the previous okay. four or five years. So, so that I, made him at, put it LeBron at ease. I got it. So I do feel sorry for LeBron because he's stuck in a sitcom of a snake pit. That's yep. what yeah. this feels like yep. to me. But he's also publicly acknowledging that Magic turned on him. Am I right? That's, that's what he's saying. He At least he could have called me. He, yeah. believed that he didn't that. have to use that for You're right. He didn't have to put Kiss it in ass. a negative way. Kiss he could have put it in, you didn't call LeBron, hey, man, I'm out of here. Right. You're right. He didn't have to put, I don't know no. if that and, means and, and what LeBron you're saying. Said, I would have been okay if he told me to kiss my ass. You know? yeah. Just something. Thank you for listening to the Hoops on Fox podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review letting us know what you think of the show.